Legend and top scorer Beth Mee warming up. Well, you've not had much sleep, have you really? Not, not a lot. Five no. hours. You have five hours sleep. You're going to go and sit down in a minute for your, our exclusive interview. Um, now, staying with the Lionesses, they continued their celebrations yesterday, lifting the trophy at the Victory Parade in London. Well, my next guest has gone from literally using jumpers for goalposts mm -hmm. to practicing her local park to being crowned player of the tournament and winning the golden boot at the women's Euros. England forward Beth Mead joins me now for her first interview since then. Wow, how are you? I mean, you, I'm not going to look a bit knackered, to be fair. <laughs> Thank you. Your whole body is just, like, gone. Yeah, it's relaxed. It's relaxed now. you relaxed? Yeah. How much sleep have you actually had, you were saying? Not a lot. Not a lot recently, Not a lot. But, yeah, enjoyed it so much. Yeah. Every minute since. It's final. just... Has your brain been able to switch off yet? Or have you... Has your brain just been... Since that moment? It has, but I don't even think it's sunk in yet. I think a lot of us, a lot of the girls, we still can't believe we've we've gone and won it. And but the way you approached each game was with such calm conviction, wasn't it? Yeah, I think credit to Serena, our manager. She really brought a calm culture, and we kind of stayed in our bubble. We kept concentrated, and yeah, we did the job. And then when that bubble burst and you got all the noise in of the whole country, yeah. what was it like in those last few minutes? Because it was extra time, last few minutes. Can you remember what was going through your mind and in your how fast your heart was beating? Yeah, I mean, the crowd were incredible. So there was a lot of uh, um, atmosphere and adrenaline, but I am terrible at sitting and waiting on a bench. It was as if the clock stopped, I think, at times. Yes. It felt so, so long after we scored, obviously, and... Yeah, um, an amazing, amazing result for us. And you've brought in your trophy, yeah. so just tell us what you've brought in here. Um, top scorer, player of the tournament and the medal. Can we just see your, your, your medal there? Yeah. What was yesterday like at Trafalgar Square? Insane, honestly. Um, just If you just hold it still there, then we sorry. can have a little look at it, yeah. Um, yeah, the, I mean, the atmosphere was amazing. It was so iconic to be at Trafalgar and... The fans were incredible. Um, I think their moments are so special and ones we've got to hold on to for a lifetime. And isn't it mad, right? You look at those pictures there. The final had something like 23 million people watching online and on TV. I mean, <clears throat> to think that there are people out there who said, the women's game, there's not enough interest in it. We okay. can't put it on primetime te telly. You, that's the story you've lived with your whole yeah. life. Yeah, I mean, it's been frustrating, but it's getting what it deserves. I mean, it's been a long time coming, but now I'm so proud of the game and how far it's come and now it's getting the recognition it deserves. Can I show you a little something? I know you were saying, I think it was it last night, you were saying you're getting emotional when you talk about the uh -huh. impact that you, the Lionesses are having, that you are having. I just want to play you a little something from, I think it's Teddington Girls Team. Let me show you. say how brilliant it's been watching you in the Euros. All the matches have been so exciting to watch. You're an inspiration to us. Hopefully now, because of what you have achieved, more girls will come and play football. Congratulations on winning Player of the Tournament and the Golden Boot. Girl power! That's what we want. It's a lasting legacy and hopefully it's the start of something special for the women's game. And talking about, obviously, the Golden Boot, which is what you won, tell, talk me through, like, what you had to do for your first pair of boots. And they were 100 quid, weren't they? Yeah, I, um, yeah, I uh, worked a job to, you know, pay for them. Um, in a bar, was it? I mean, in a bar, yeah. Uh, yeah, a local pub to where I live. I waitressed and worked behind the bar just to get my boots so I could train on the, the weekend after I worked. It's incredible, isn't it, to think now, I mean, you know, you'll never have to buy a pair of boots for yourself ever again, will you, after this? No, I mean, I think that's what makes you appreciate the moments more and the things that we're getting now. Um, yes, it's becoming the norm, but, yeah, when I was younger, uh, I had to work hard to get a pair of boots. Well, or to even find the right goalposts. I mean, you literally mm -hmm. did use jumpers for goalposts. Tell us a bit about... Well, this. How old are you here? Um, I actually don't know, maybe seven... Eight, nine. Look at you. That's the winner's punch, isn't it? You're just like, right, yeah, punch in the air. And um, what was it like back then when you were playing? I mean, you have had to play in the boys' game and all of that. Just tell us a little bit about your journey. Yeah, um, where I'm from is literally in the middle of nowhere. Um, 
so there wasn't a lot of opportunities. Um, I travelled maybe 45 minutes an hour um, to the local boys team. Who were, there wasn't many pathways for girls at that time, so, I mean, I loved every minute playing with the boys and I wouldn't change it now. It developed me to be the player that I am today, but, um, yeah, it's just so nice to know that young girls can, you know, go into a pathway now and have the quality and the coaches and the facilities behind it to help them. Help and them you out. mentioned that about having to travel 45 minutes. I know that I think your mum and your dad obviously have had to do so much for you, haven't they, to get you to this point. Mum and dad are here somewhere. Morning, guys. Um, your mum took on a second job. She did, um, yeah. She worked in a pub as well. Um, yeah, she, uh, she did that so we could pay the petrol to get me to training. Um, obviously, it wasn't close, so I appreciate it a lot and I'm so proud of what they've done. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? It's absolutely wonderful to have you here. Um, what was the partying like? I mean, <laughs> what time did you stop partying? Are you still I don't partying? Think we have yet. Yeah, I'm still yet. partying. No. Um, I mean, it's been. It's been a long time since we've brought our big trophy home with England, so <laughs> the party won't stop for a long time, but we've loved every minute of it. And we've got the World Cup. So this isn't this is just in a way the taster, isn't it, for what the Lionesses can achieve? Yeah, it is, and we haven't officially qualified for the World Cup yet. We've still got a couple more games, so we've got them in September coming up, August, September. Um, but yeah, it's in Australia, New Zealand and it's the biggest stage again, so it's something where we want to be and try and perform again. And I think your, your coach is the sort of person who will be like, right, party mm -hmm. now, give yourself a couple of weeks to enjoy it, and then it'll be straight back into the bubble, won't it, I think? Oh, yeah. She uh, told us to enjoy these moments, um, that our lives will probably change. Well, um, they have. Now, but, um, yeah, as soon as we're back into camp, I'm sure she'll get us running around and focused again. Absolutely. Well, congratulations. What Thank an inspiration you. to have you in and you absolutely have earned a massive rest. Thank you very much. <laughs> Enjoy a few cocktails. Yes, I will. Uh, in just a